I've been in the water with sharks. I've seen bears. I've seen all kinds of animals. I've seen avalanches and scary things, but people creep me out the most. All right, so let's start with Dur Desman. He asks, would you eat friends that are stranded with you if there was no other sources of food? Hell yes, I would. Brad Venderman asks, your I almost died moment, if any. I fortunately, knock on wood, don't have I almost died moments. Although once in Iceland, we walked way too far, the weather turned, we were not properly outfitted. And by the time we got back to the car, I'm pretty sure I had frostbite and was thinking I wish I had died. Inferno SZN asks, what is the craziest, scariest thing you've encountered in the wild? Honestly, people, that's it. I've been in the water with sharks. I've seen bears. I've seen all kinds of animals. I've seen avalanches and scary things, but people creep me out the most. 80 cool. Most intense encounter between a predatory animal in the wild. Uh, I was just in Tahiti by myself in the water with three large tiger sharks. So that was pretty awesome. But there was no moment in there that I was nervous about it until it got a little bit murky and sharks get a little bit pushy. But you have to know how to interact with them. Becker Glory. What do you personally believe is required to become a survivalist? I would say a positive mental attitude and practice. Again, all these things things and tips that I throw out. They sound great in theory. You can watch the Bear grills of the world do them, but when you're out there and you're actually building a snare and you're trying to harvest animals or build a shelter, you really wanna have some practice under your belt. Foxhole, at what stage would building a full-on shelter, for instance, a house cabin in the forest be a reasonable option? Hopefully never. I mean, the idea is that if you're ever stranded in the wild, whether it's a plane crash or a boat stranding or a car breaking down, that someone knows you're gone and is looking for you. In our modern world of technology, the chances are pretty high they're gonna find you quickly. But you know, if you've been out there for a couple weeks, start building something that's a little bit nicer than just a lean-to. Shroomy says, what is the most difficult thing to do in a survival situation? Example, starting a fire, finding food, water, etc. I would say staying calm. I think the panic that sets in when you realize you're in a survival situation can really throw you for a loop. After that, fire starting without anything, especially if it's damp out, that's pretty tough. XXLIL underscore Dino XX says, have you ever been in a scenario where you had to survive until rescue came? Not in a crazy not self-inflicted survival scenario, but I have been in the wild by myself for a couple of days and had to use the skills, but never in the extreme sense where the plane crashed or anything like that. Knock on wood. Extreme hot dog flipper, cool name, says if you're stranded on an island with friends, is that positive or negative? Depends on the friends, to be honest. <laughs> Mostly having companions is positive. I mean, A, positive mental attitude is so much of the survival game, and B, they might have some really cool skills. Although if they tell bad jokes and they're really annoying, then not good. Bennett Demoni asks, how do emotions and mood influence your surviving? Great question, it's huge. Honestly, it is so imperative to have a positive mental attitude and stay calm. There are so many stories of a 30-year-old ex-military dude dying in two days where the 80-year-old grandma survives for two weeks. So there's so much of it up here. It's a great book called Deep Survival, Who Lives, Who Dies, and Why, and it really gets into the psychology of survival. List TH says, what has been the worst injury you have had on an excursion? Honestly, probably a jellyfish sting. Out in Panama, I got the backs of my legs and my butt hit with the jellyfish and it is it sends a shock through your body. And there was a moment where I was like, I'm not gonna be able to swim back to the boat because your entire body starts convulsing and then it lasts a couple days, it's super painful. And peeing on it doesn't really work that well. You want hot water mostly. when you go poo in the woods and you've got trash, bury it. Uh, for one, it's just more sanitary. Don't poo, pee, and throw waste next to your water source. Keep it also away from your shelter because it's most likely gonna attract predators, but burying waste is the best way to get rid of it. Alex Larrick says, worst experience on a deep dive, getting narked and getting freezing cold, not wearing the right wetsuit and being in water that was unbelievably cold to the point where you just just you feel like you give up. And when you get to that mental space, that's really bad. Your probability of survival has just increased to unlikely, but plausible. <sighs> ah! 
survival is, is a really broad plane. There's another really interesting book that talks about survival and it basically opens talking about how it's not usually the nicest people who survive, but the people who are willing to do the most to ensure their own survival. And sometimes that's doing things that you don't wanna talk about later. There are a lot of stories of people who have survived really crazy situations and ended up taking their own lives. There is a lot of PTSD that goes along with it. If you are somewhere and you were impaled in the abdomen, uh, really, really bad. Generally with an impalement, you don't wanna pull it out, especially in the abdomen, because you can cause yourself massive internal bleeding. Sometimes if a wound, you can't stop with pressure, you actually might have to stick your fingers in there and grab a vein or an artery and pinch it shut. You can also cauterize a wound with fire. Not pleasant, but you have to do that if you have to do that. I would probably hang on to that last match until there was really like dire straits of needing to light a campfire. I would probably try a couple other methods, then save that match. Interacting with dangerous animals. I mean, predators are pretty straightforward. I think anytime if you come upon a bear or a wolf or a mountain lion, wolves are really skittish. I know that in video games, they like to attack people all the freaking time, but in reality, that's not gonna happen. Bears, yeah. I mean, again, black bears, you wanna fight them. Brown bears, you wanna lay down. Polar bears, you're out. Uh, mountain lions, make yourself as big as you possibly can and never run. Don't ever run from a predator. That would even incite a dog to chase you. Signaling is actually one of the most important things in a survival situation because realistically someone is going to be looking for you and the best way to do that is with a campfire and smoke. So build a fire and once that fire is going really strong, you can take green pine boughs or leaves and pile it on top so that you have a lot of, a lot of smoke. I think the most important survival skills that any of us in this space have to have is being able to build shelter, even the most simple shelter, being able to start a fire without matches, and being able to find and purify water. If you are lucky enough to have tools with you, I would say that number one, you would want to have a knife. You can use that for so many different things. Uh, number two, I, if you are lucky enough to have water purification system, that is great. A compass is awesome. Having handy doodads like fish hooks and rope is always wonderful as well. But if I had to have one thing, it would be a good knife or a multi-tool. Survival skills in the urban environment, I would say the biggest takeaway is the mental aspect of it. There are a lot of similarities to going through stressful situations in life and going through stressful situations in a survival element. And I think being able to control yourself mentally and staying calm is actually super beneficial in both. Fan questions, take nine, A mark. Looking at camera, lean in. Smile. <laughs> Ready? Ready. Just smiling the camera. Four, three, and cut.